create with the library. I'm Mary Baker from the Brunswick Library. I'm a library associate. And today, now that we've all finished all of our Christmas projects, we're gonna make something nice for ourselves. We're gonna do something which is a little bit out of my comfort zone, something in the fiber arts. I am not a knitter, crocheter, sewer, not my strength. So it needs to be something simple. And today we're gonna to do arm knitting. If you haven't tried it, it's a lot of fun and it really is simple. Your arms are gonna be the needles. Big, flexible needles with these wonderful things called hands at the end, which makes your life a whole lot easier. Now, since you have such big needles, you need to think a little bit about the yarn. There's all different types of yarn and you need to be kind of uh, careful on which you select for your project. To make things a little bit easier for us Fiber Challenge, the good folks at the Craft Yarn Council have come up with yarn standards. You'll see these symbols on uh, your yarn and we have uh, a couple of samples here. I tried originally to use the jumbo yarn. The problem with the jumbo is that you don't get as much in your skein. Uh, so that's only 22 yards in a skein and that's not enough to be able to do the cowl. The one I'm actually going to end up using is the uh, six, which is the super bulky. Uh, the jumbo is the seven. And then I'm gonna be using the six here, the super bulky. The other thing that you find is you get things that you might have in your stash that's been sitting around for a while before they came out with these lovely things. And it may say chunky, and you think it might be actually a chunky yarn. Well, it's really not. It's really more of the light or the medium. I tried making a, uh, a cowl out of that, and uh, it's just too light uh, to be able to use. So when you're picking your yarn, take a look for these symbols and I would recommend for a arm knitting either a five, a six, or if you can find a large enough skein, a seven for your, uh, for your cowl. Today I'm gonna to show you the basics of knitting an infinity scarf. We'll be casting on, which is actually the hardest part of the whole deal, and even it's pretty easy. Knitting, casting off, and then finishing the project. It's gonna be a nice loose cowl, and but there are loads of patterns that are available online. I'm gonna give you a list of uh, books as well as websites below that will give you some other ideas for different projects. To knit your cowl, you're either gonna need one very large skein of the jumbo yarn or two in this case, this is the super bulky yarn. I thought as a fiber challenge that this would be difficult to do using two, two uh, skeins, but it really isn't difficult at all. So the first thing you're gonna to want to do is pull off about six feet, two yards of your, of your yarn. What you've just pulled off is gonna be considered the tail, while the rest of your yarn back to your skein is your working yarn. At this point, we're gonna to need to make a slip knot. So take your yarn, twist it once, just to make a, a loop, a simple loop, just like you were making a ribbon for your favorite cause. Take your two fingers, stick it through the loop, and pull up the front part of that yarn, and you've made your slip knot. We're gonna do that again. So loop, in this case, my case, my front part of my yarn is from my working yarn, so maybe that's easier to remember to which leg you're working with. Put my fingers through, pick up a strand of the working yarn and pull it through and I've got my slip knot. That's going to be your very first stitch. Slide that onto your dominant hand and then tighten it on up, voila you've started your project. Now let's cast on. First thing you're gonna do is grab both sets of yarn, both your working yarn and your tail yarn. You can see, you can tell the difference pretty easily. Take that in the last three fingers of your other hand, grasp hold of it tightly, and then take your thumb and your index finger 
and separate those two strands. Now, if you flip your fingers over, you've gotten to where you need to be to be able to cast on. I'm gonna show you that again, because honestly, this was the part that tricked me up. I'm going, what the heck did she just do? Anyway, here you go. Two strands of yarn, take it in your last three fingers, hold it in your other hand, take your finger, your index finger and your thumb. You're gonna separate those two strands of yarn and you're gonna flip your hand back up. Now you've got a nice little cross here and you can see it, you've got a cross there. Uh, if you don't have that, then you're doing it wrong. Uh, and I have done that. I don't even remember now how I did it, uh, but I have done it. Anyway, uh, at this point, we're ready to cast on. Take your index finger of your dominant hand, slide it underneath the loop on your thumb, pull it on over and underneath the loop that's on your index finger. Pull that up, release, and you have your first stitch. I'm now gonna slide that onto my arm. To make this cowl, I'm gonna do 10 stitches because I want it to be a decent size and I'm gonna knit to about five feet. So you're gonna have plenty of time to be able to see me do this again. So you ready? Our two strands, thumb and index finger to separate those legs, index finger to pick up the yarn on the thumb, pulling it over to pick up the yarn on the index finger. You've created a loop, which you then open and slide onto your arm. One thing you do have to watch is not to get too tight on your, your uh, knitting arm. Um, it's easy to do. You want to you wanna pull that really tight and uh, feel like you're accomplishing something. But if you do, when you get to the end, you're going to find that your two ends are two different sizes. So try and keep that kind of nice and loose. Ah, there we go. I did it. I don't have a cross here. I knew I'd be able to show you that at some point. So your two legs separate with your thumb and forefinger. There we go. Got it correctly. So index finger off the thumb, pull it around the index and slide it on. Once people start doing these in videos and they do it so quickly and you can't see it, it's pretty frustrating. I have to tell you, it's honestly pretty easy. Your two strands of yarn, your index and your thumb, pull it up, index finger through the thumb, over the other index finger, and tighten onto your arm. At this point, I've done one, two, three, four, five, six stitches. So I'm gonna speed this up. You can see I've still got about a yard of uh, tail yarn. I'm basically not gonna be using that anymore. This is now the end of its life and we're gonna be working strictly off of the working yarn from this point out. But we're ready to knit. So I like keeping my yarn out of the way. So I've actually taken the two balls of yarn and thrown them off the table so they'll stay out of my way. Uh, and I am now ready to knit. I'm gonna be taking my yarn, my working yarn, wrapping it over my thumb and holding it in the fist of my hand on which I've cast on. Here's the first stitch. Pull it over your, your hand. The other reason why you don't want it too tight you're going to do a small half twist and slide it on to your other arm. This gets to be kind of odd. feels like you're a little bit handcuffed. This is where you hope the phone doesn't ring. But like I say, it's a quick project, so you should be okay. So we're going to do that again. The yarn goes over your thumb, holding it in the fist. Take your stitch, pull it over your hand, half twist, and onto your non-dominant hand. I like to tighten up between each one, but again, you don't wanna do it too tight. You can see it's hard enough to pull these stitches over my hand if it's too tight, it becomes a real problem. So yarn over my thumb, rest of the yarn in my hand, pull my stitch over, 
half twist and slide it on. So you know what? This is not that tough. I know you can do it. You're all doing it along with me, right? So real simple. I know you don't need to see me do this whole whole uh, scarf at this point. So we're gonna finish this row off and then we'll work on putting that infinity scarf together. So, and through the magic of fast forward, there you have it. We've completed that first row. Sometimes I think that half twist is a little bit odd, but you, you start doing it without even thinking about it. You get into a rhythm. Um, as you can see, I've got my nice first row here. I tend to pull my rows between each one just to make sure that everything's kind of the same size. You can see it's a little bit loose in here. If I pull this, it's not really tightening it. All it's doing is tightening on my hand. So to tighten that last stitch, you can actually pull on the stitch itself and work some of that looseness back into the row. Uh, I found that's the easiest way to do that. Now, as a right-handed person, um, I found that this was a little bit more difficult to do one direction than the other. Uh, oddly enough, it was more difficult to do it from my right to my left because my left hand was doing all the work from my left to my right was pretty, pretty quick, usually. So in your thumb, over your fist, half twist, tighten it up. It goes pretty quickly. Um, I said I would do about five feet to make a, a nice cowl, you can judge for yourself. That's if you wanted to tw have a twist in your cowl, if you're just doing a shorter cowl, just so it's gonna go around once, you can do less. Uh, I think this particular one is gonna be a little bit less. One more stitch. And you can see how fast this knits up. It really does go pretty darn quickly. So in the course of you know, an evening of watching uh, Mindless TV, you can get yourself a pretty nice looking scarf. So, you don't need to sit and watch me knit the rest of this. I'm going to go ahead and do this and we'll get back together again when we're ready to cast off. Okay, I'm going to quit because it's not really a good use of your tax dollars for me to sit and knit for the next hour but uh, this is enough to be able to, to show you the project. This was probably, oh, I don't know, uh, 10 minutes worth of knitting. It didn't take very long. Um, but now let's, let's cast off. To cast off, you're gonna start by knitting your first two stitches. So knit, slide it onto your other arm, and do your second stitch. At this point, that's the most number of stitches you're ever going to get on this, this hand once you cast off. You'll be casting off by taking your first stitch that you knit, pulling it over the second stitch, tightening up a little bit. Again, make sure you don't make it too tight because you don't want it to be a different size than your, your other end. So a little bit, but not too much. And you cast off your first stitch. So now we're going to knit another stitch, slide it on, and do the same thing. Take that back stitch, slide it over your hand, tighten it up, and now you cast off two stitches. That's all there is to it. I just messed up, didn't I? Got a little too overexcited. That's all there is to it to casting off. So let's knit the stitch first before you slide it off. There we go. Tighten it up, slide that over your other stitch, and that's all there is to it. Knit, slide over, tighten up. And when you are done to your last stitch, you can tighten that up. I'm gonna hold on to this so I don't lose it. I would like to kind of see how my stitches, how my two ends look compared to each other. You can see my end is actually a little bit wider than my beginning, so I probably should have tightened this up just a little bit more, but I did not. Um, so I've got my final stitch here. 
going to want about another uh, two yards of yarn just to be safe. And at this point, really sharp scissors here, I'm done with my working yarn. I'm going to slide my end through my final stitch, tighten it up, and we're done with the knitting portion. Again, you kind of want to make sure everything is somewhat even, so I'm pulling things out just a little bit, try and make those two ends look a little bit more even. You can see by, by doing that, I shortened it up a little bit. Um, this is also like traditional knitting. You can tell your right side from your back side pretty easily. This is our knit side. This is the back side. You can see the stitch looks totally different. It's a purl stitch on the back. Um, so it's really easy to tell your, your, your front from the back. Uh, and at this point, what we're gonna do is we're gonna fold it in half to be able to join those ends. I'm looking at my ends here, they look pretty good, looks like everybody's about the same length. I've got a little bit of a loose stitch in there, I might want to play with a little bit. Um, but then this is what we're going to be using to seam up your seam and if you do it the right way, your stitches pretty much disappear. So your end is coming from this stitch here. What you want to do is find the V's of your stitches. There's a V, there's a V. I don't know how easily this is. This can be seen on video. There's a V, there's a V. So find the V's in your stitches. That's another thing. If you find that your stitches are not entirely even and you want to even them out, this is a good time to do that too. I'm pulling some of that extra fullness from this end down to this end. So my end, I'm going to look for that V. I'm going to come in behind it and pull underneath it. What that's going to do is basically create a purl stitch on the other side. So it's going to look just like the other, the other side. You want to do the same thing on this side. You want to find your V's. Again, this one's a little bit looser, so it's a little, a little harder for me to do, but there's a V. I should have straightened this up first. Pull it on through. And you're just creating a purl stitch on the opposite side. Pretty easy to do. Uh, you can pull through your yarn with each with each stitch if you'd like to or you can just go and just st stitch back 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 and forth until the whole thing is done and then just give it a good solid pull and you, you're done with it um, when you are totally done at that point you now have edges that you've got to deal with the easiest way to get rid of those edges edges is to then weave them back through your scarf through some of your more tight stitches. You can see I've got a nice tight little knot there. I'm gonna weave this end on through. Pull it through. Look for another nice little tight spot. There's another one right there. Just gonna keep going with the, uh, with the run of the yarn do that about three times. At that point, that's going to be pretty solid. Again, you can't even see it. It looks like part of the knitting and you can go ahead and you can cut off your extra. It's gone. You've got yourself a nice cowl. I pull my finished one that I did the other night. Um, I say an easy project one evening and you've got a lovely cowl for yourself. And there you go. One infinity scarf. Very easy. A one evening project. Uh, folks on the internet will tell you it can take 15 to 30 minutes. It took me about an hour to be able to do this. 
to give myself a lovely cozy winter scarf. I hope you enjoyed this edition of Create with the Library. Uh, don't forget there are more resources below for additional project ideas and uh, please be sure to like the video and subscribe to our YouTube channel for new content every week. And if you have any ideas for other episodes for Create with the Library, please be sure to include those in the comments. Thank you again. Look forward to seeing you in another edition.